Those two underplays yesterday, well, they definitely sucked. Hopefully you caught the morning wager and my appearance on Wager Talk today, though, yesterday, because everything I gave out there won, but for you, the loyal watchers of the Power Five, I need to be better. Still a 125, 104, and 6 overall run here on the show, and we did move a step closer to cashing a couple plus money series tickets on the Mets and Padres yesterday. Oh, by the way, for today, I've got a free winner for you on all four MLB playoff matchups, plus a look at tonight's college football game as Conference USA continues to dominate the weekday landscape. Go ahead, you let me know what you think of these selections down below, and if you agree, don't be shy about smashing that like button. Here we go, 308 Eastern, Guardians at Tigers. This could be the first playoff game in Detroit since 2014. We're betting into a lot of a variance here as the Tigers are going with, in their words, chaos, a.k.a. a bullpen game, while the Guardians turn to Alex Cobb, who has not started a game since September 1st. I still like the under, though. Why? Well, four postseason games thus far. The Tigers lineup has managed to score a run in only four of 36 total innings played. They've essentially had three good innings at the plate, a lot of runs coming with two outs. Cobb, he's likely to have a short leash, but I think he's going to pitch well. He probably should go into the fourth inning. Both starters, I think, for the Guardians have gone four and two-thirds so far in this series. After that, we get what has been the best bullpen in all of baseball this season. The little we saw from Cobb during the regular season, coupled with the Tiger struggles at the plate, are enough to convince me the Guardians will be fine uh, early on and throughout from a run suppression perspective. Of course, the Tigers, they've got a very good bullpen as well. 2.71 ERA since August 1st. That's the best in baseball during that time. And I think the most likely option for them to open is going to be Brant Herter. Uh, Cleveland did make short work of Detroit's Game 1 opener, Tyler Holton. But since that five-run first inning of this series, the Guards have scored just two runs in 17 innings, guys. And they were held only three hits in Game 2. Tigers manager A.J. Hinch, has said 10 of his 12 pitchers will be available this afternoon. It's a lot of options uh, for the former World Series winner uh, in the dugout. Bullpen heavy game. Both skippers looking to create pitcher-friendly situations. That's got me on the under seven in game three of Guardians-Tigers. Moving on to play number two today. At home, I think the Mets close out the Phillies in game four, 508 Eastern. I do not think it's going to be a particularly effective outing from Philadelphia's Ranger Suarez, who was... Not really good down the stretch after coming back from injury. He last pitched on September 27th when he allowed six runs in just two innings. His fastball velocity has been way down since coming off the IL. This is going to be the Mets' fourth time seeing Suarez in 2024. Now, we did talk about the first five under on the morning wager. Mark Zeno and I, I still think that's a good bet, obviously, at four and a half. But uh, I just think at the first sign of trouble, Suarez is out of there. Hopefully he makes it long enough that we don't see a ton. Well, for, for this Mets, uh, I think the Mets can obviously take advantage of that bad Phillies bullpen late. And I think that's when they pile it on. Again, the Mets have been doing a lot of late scoring in the postseason. Meanwhile, Jose Quintana starts for the Mets. Uh... The Mets got a great outing yesterday, as I anticipated from Sean Manea. Uh, don't expect Quintana to go as long as Manaya did, but the Mets' bullpen is in good shape for this one. Quite frankly, I'm shocked to see them listed at even money here for Game 4. I think the Mets get the game win tonight, the, get the win, series win tonight, pardon me. They pour it on late with some scoring, and for the third consecutive year, we see the sixth seed in the NL advance to the LCS. Remember, we are holding a ticket on them north of plus 160 to win this series. All right, number three, I like the over eight in game three of Yankees Royals. Clark Schmidt starting for New York, but we also could be seeing rookie Luis Heal later on. Sounds like a pretty nice combo for the Bronx Bombers uh, on the mound. But remember, this Royals lineup is a lot more prolific at home where they strike out a lot less and walk a lot more. So I look for big time improvements at the plate from them after producing a 282, 325, and 366 slash line in the first two games. On the flip side, it's Seth Lugo pitching for the Royals. He's a guy I've really had little faith in, in the, during the second half of the season. You go all the way back to before the All-Star break. Lugo was really overachieving. That's how he got the All-Star nod. Uh, Yankees led all of MLB with a 120 WRC+, plus, and I just don't trust the Royals' bullpen either. The two stars in this series, Judge for the Yanks and Witt for Casey, they're a combined one for 17 at the plate. One or both is likely to break out sooner rather than later, right? So over eight in this one for me. In the nightcap... I like the under eight in Dodgers Padres. San Diego going for the kill here. They're starting Dylan Cease. Cease was not good in game one, uh, admittedly. Gave up five runs and three and a third. 
Uh, this is going to be Cease's third start since September 25th. Ironically, all of them have come against the Dodgers. I think he's better tonight than he was in game one. Does have better numbers at home than on the road. And the Padres can turn to their elite bullpen to finish the job. Remember, outside of the uh, Hernandez Grand Slam last night, the Dodgers lineup didn't do anything. Now, when it comes to saving their season, LA is going to be pretty cagey. Uh, they are being cagey when it comes to announcing a starter. Uh, I think Landon Knack, we're going to see him in a bulk role. This is going to be a heavy bullpen game, probably for both teams. I just think the number of runs scored last night were misleading. A lot of cluster luck. San Diego scored all six of its runs in one inning. The Dodgers got a grand slam. Uh, other than that, there was one run the rest of the game. Padres, for the second time this postseason, uh, put up the big uh, inning early. Remember, they did that against the Braves when I had a best bet winner on them last Wednesday. Then they didn't score the rest of the game. Uh same thing last night. Uh, I like the under eight, bottom line, here in the nightcap. And uh, before we get to tonight's college football game, let's talk about the latest special offer going on right now at wagertalk.com. If you buy a 30-day all-access pass for $299, we will give you another 30 days of service for just $99. Right now is a great time to get on board with me. I'm number one in football this season at Wager Talk, 29-14 and 14 record, 68% with all NFL and college up 41.1 units. Also, I've started October with a 7-1 and one all sports run. I'm the number one capper the last seven days across the board. So if you're looking to lock in long term, head on over to wt.buzz slash bp where you can get an additional 30 days of service for just $99 if you buy a 30-day all-access at the normal price. All right, I will now close out Wednesday's edition of the Power 5 with a look at tonight's college football game. New Mexico State at Jacksonville State. This is one for the betters. Uh, it's ugly. Jacksonville State, a 20-point favorite. Do not want to lay that. Not interested at all. But I do like Rich Rod's Gamecocks over their team total of 38.5. You can bet that minus 120 at DraftKings. New Mexico State in their last game allowed 50 points to New Mexico. That right there should get you banned from FBS football. They allowed 48 at Fresno State earlier in the year, year uh, did the Aggies. Uh, while Jacksonville State's defense isn't good either, we don't have to worry about that by simply playing them over the team total, obviously. This Gamecocks offense likes to run the ball, and they're going to be facing a New Mexico State defense that allows 5.7 yards per carry. That's bottom 10 in the country. Already, we've seen Jacksonville State go for 63 points and 44 the last two games. Outside the Louisville game, they've averaged over 7 yards per play this season. The home team should have no difficulty scoring tonight, so Jacksonville State over 38.5 team total is the way to go. Let us now recap the Power 5. I threw a lot at you here. Uh, number 1, Guardians Tigers under 7. Number 2, Mets money line against the Phillies. Number 3, over 8, Yankees Royals. Number 4, under 8, Dodgers Padres. Number 5, Jacksonville State over their team total of 38 and a half. Again, that's minus 120 at DraftKings. Go ahead, let me know what you think of those selections down in the comments section below. Don't be shy about letting me know what your favorite best bets are for tonight as well. Also, again, if you'd be so kind, always appreciate the support. A thumbs up goes a long way if you're enjoying this free content on Wager Talk TV. So smash that like button if you haven't done that already. Don't forget to take advantage of that special offer I mentioned earlier. One more time, I am number one at Wage Talk this football season. A combined 29-14 and 14 record in NFL and college. Number one overall the last seven days as well. Seven and one start, all sports in October. You also want to make sure you are subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel and click that bell for instant alerts. That way you'll know when your favorite shows like this one or the Morning Wager with myself and Mark Zinno drop. That's going to do it. For the Wednesday edition of the Power Five. Until next time, everybody, uh, let's catch some tickets.